Here's a little breakup advice. Never look at an ex's social media ever. Don't do it. Don't. All my exes, uh, they're sending me signals. Like every post is still clearly for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Smiling in a wedding dress. Nice try. <laughs> Sad. Sad when people can't move on with their life. I was sad after the break, and my friends were like, hey, you gotta get, you gotta get out there, you gotta, you gotta get laid. And I was like, hell yeah. I get, I get street when I'm sad. And, uh, <laughs> but then that voice in your head is like, it will it'll make you sad if you do that. I was like, right, right. But then that voice in my head is like, but you'll do it. And I was like, of course, yeah. <laughs> I meet this woman, she's beautiful, but she's incredibly vain. She picks out a pretty pricey spot, we go to dinner. While we're having dinner, she actually says this. She goes, you know my last boyfriend? Starting quarterback in the NFL, so, you know. <laughs> I said, I know what. She goes, said, I'm a catch. I said, yeah, because he threw you away and I caught you. So you are, <laughs> you're a catch. And she gave me a look. I said, you're very attractive. She goes, you're just saying that because you're trying to sleep with me. I said, and you're pretty smart as well. So, you know, <laughs> it's pretty good. The bill comes 375 bucks. And she saw it because I, I angled it. And... <laughs> We're back at my place, we're making out. She stops kissing me for a sec, and she goes, I don't want to be some girl you text your friends about. I said, I'm not going to text my friend Chase about this. <laughs> she goes, Chase, I was like, too specific. You're not, you're not supposed to have a name locked and loaded, but that, that's my recap buddy, Chase. Everyone here has a recap buddy. It's, it's just your horny friend. <laughs> it's your friend who's a little too excited that you got laid. This is how it usually plays out. Dude, I had sex last night. He writes back, Instagram profile now. <laughs> I shoot it over, he writes back, hell yeah. And I'm ashamed to say his enthusiasm fills the emptiness in my life with purpose. So, <laughs> I continue making out with her. I go to remove her pants. She goes, there's something you need to know. I was like, that's not what you want to hear when you're <laughs> taking off pants. She goes, I haven't shaved in a really long time. I'm getting a Brazilian wax tomorrow before my trip to Europe. And I said, well, that is very exciting news for the next fella. <laughs> I don't think it's helping me here tonight in the United States, but thank you for briefing me on the renovation schedule. <laughs> she brings a bottle of wine into my bed next, which is a classic 25-year-old move. This is what I get for bringing home a woman that young. A woman my age would never roll the dice on quality linens with red pinot. It's amateur hour, but... <laughs> I usually date more age appropriate. My ex was also, uh, you know, younger. When you date a few years younger, your friends always say things like, young women, they can fuck all night. And I'm like, cool, I can't. So, <laughs> you know what else young women can do? They can fight all night and they're willing to because they think it matters. <laughs> I need an older woman with a job that depletes her. That's what I need. <laughs> Comes home after the job just grinds her into a nice salt. She just collapses on the couch like, don't talk to me. And I'm like, I won't. <laughs> I'm in bed with this woman. She's got the bottle of wine. I politely say, hey, do you mind taking the bottle out of the bed? I'm worried you're going to spill it. She goes, yeah, I'm going to spill it. The second she says it, dumps it everywhere. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then she goes, they're just sheets, you pussy. And I said, the way you're disrespecting me right now is really making my dick hard. Good stuff. <laughs> Keep it up. Then she grabs me and goes, I'll make it up to you. And I was like, respect. <laughs> Female privilege. A move us fellas can't pull off. I can't ruin your things and then be like, whip out that vag. <laughs> I know I destroyed one of your belongings, but I figure I finger you for a bit. We're back on track. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> By the way, it's 6.30 a.m. I'm not going to get laid. It's fine. I'm washed up. I'm past my prime. It's a younger man's game. I lack the patience, the perseverance, the passion. It's all over for me. <laughs> Look out the window. I see a jogger, and I was like, ugh. You and me both, buddy. <laughs> Fighting the good fight. A different fight, but a fight nonetheless. <laughs> 638 comes around, and for some reason, she's coming on to me aggressively. We're making out. She's naked. I'm naked. I'm like, maybe I'm going to turn this around. Might, maybe I got one more in me. Who knows? I didn't know where she starts crying. I said, what the hell happened? Are you all right? She goes, I had a breakup, too. I said, all right, let's not do this. And she goes, but I really, really want to. I said, I'm sorry. I'm not comfortable with it. She goes, please. And I go, sure. So <laughs> we have sex around 7.15 a.m. We wrap up promptly around 7.21. <laughs> nothing showy, but nothing to sneeze at, neither. And the second it's over, she goes, I'm leaving. I said, just spend the night. She goes, I've seen your comedy. I know you don't like it when women spend the night. 
I said, they're just jokes. She goes, there's truth to every joke. I said, sometimes you're messing around. She goes, I'm leaving. I said, sincerely, I hope you spend the night or morning, whatever the hell this is. We'll get six hours of sleep. We'll get a late breakfast. You might even have a fun day with me tomorrow. You never know. She looks right at me and goes, bye, and slams the door in my face. <laughs> and I do a sad, slow, pathetic walk back to my bed. And I collapse into the wine-soaked sheets. <laughs> and I roll over and I text Chase, I'm back, motherfucker. <laughs> You need your buddies. Everyone, you need your buddies. I was hanging out with a close friend the other day. He's a gay man. And uh, you ever hang out with a gay guy so much that their behavior slowly begins to rub off on you? <laughs> We're gossiping about a mutual friend. And he goes, oh, that guy. I heard he's got a huge dick. And I was like, really? <laughs> then a few days later, I'm with a straight friend. The same guy's name comes up. I was like, I heard that guy's got a massive hog. And he was like, why are you telling me this? I like, <laughs> thought that's what we do now. We talk about our friend Sweet Dong. <laughs> we were talking about HPV, which, by the way, if you don't have it at this point, get off the bench and get in the game, really. <laughs> found, out I, found out I had it years ago. The doctor was like, you have HPV? And I was like, oh, no. And he goes, who gives a shit? I have it. <laughs> I said, really? He goes, did you fuck in your 20s? And I said, yeah. He goes, then you have it. <laughs> I looked at the nurse. She does this. It's a direct quote from my doctor. Did you fuck in your 20s? I was like, I'm gonna have to get a better insurance plan next year. <laughs> but I become buddies with this doctor because you know I don't have to use the portal with him. I could just text him for information. Like I, my neck was killing me. I said, hey, can I do kettlebells? They're gonna agitate the nerve in my neck. He wrote, I can't talk right now. I'm fucking my ex in Italy. <laughs> I said, well, you wrote that. You could have written yes or no probably, but <laughs> my doctor's my friend Chase. <laughs>